guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here hey girly it feels so good to finally sit down and film a video for you guys i'm in a lot better spirits i feel a lot like rejuvenated it has now been three weeks since i had my son he's actually right here bundled up so you're gonna see his little feet kicking around and him making noises but today we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of what it's like to really have a baby i told you guys on snapchat to leave me a ton of questions tmi like go in on everything you guys want to know so that is what we're going to be doing today i'm going to talk about everything that you guys asked me but like i said i'm so happy to finally be back and posting videos for you guys so make sure you keep coming back to my channel to check for new uploads every week so let's go ahead and open up this snapchat and get these questions i asked you guys a couple days ago so let's see what everyone had to ask the first question comes from Bailey and she said, did you get the shakes? Yes. And I did not even know that those were a thing until the delivery of my son. With my daughter, I didn't have this experience. Uh Oh, <laughs> someone is going. But with my daughter, the epidural did work, so I didn't feel anything. Like, you know, I pushed twice, she slipped on out. Like, it was kind of hard for me to hold my son because I was just shaking so much and I didn't know what was going on. I felt like, oh, maybe it was just from like the release of pain or maybe I'm just nervous, but like, so I don't even know why that actually happens. We're gonna look that up. So it says that the shakes can occur from the immediate hormonal shift that occurs after delivery. So, hmm, has to do with the hormones. Karina asked, did you tear? I did tear. I had a second degree tear. Why am I smiling? That shit hurt. Usually smiling at the most inappropriate times. But no, that hurt. If you watch my birth vlog, you will see the doctor with the needle and the thread actually sewing me back. So if you have an epidural, you don't have to get injected with the lidocaine, I believe that's what it's called. It's the same thing that they basically put in your gums if they're gonna like pull a tooth or do like dental work, they inject you down there with it. So if you have an epidural, you're already numb down there, so they'll probably just, you know, sew you up. But if you did not have an epidural or, you know, you're going all natural or it failed, you will probably, honestly, you're probably not even gonna feel the tear because you're gonna feel all the pressure from pushing the baby out. Some women say they feel it, but I've read that most women say they don't feel the tear at all or even notice it. Sienna asked, did you poop during delivery? I always see on social media that everyone poops, but the nurses hide it from the parents. So Anthony, I told him like, let me know like, if I poop. Like most people don't want to know that. I feel like the nurses also don't tell you because they don't want you to feel embarrassed or feel like uncomfortable. And then you start focusing on that instead of focusing on pushing. Uh, but I asked Anthony, like, did I poop? Like after I had Nyla and he's like, no, you did it. And I asked him again, did I poop after I had our son? And I did it. So, so yeah, I also heard that the nurses will not tell you, but Anthony confirmed with me that I didn't. So yay. <laughs> SX Vels asked, how did you know that you truly wanted kids? So you must be new here because if you've been watching me for a while, um, I've kind of been pretty vocal about not wanting to become a parent and not wanting to have children. And that only came out of the fear of not being good enough to be you know a good enough mother because you know i had my own experiences growing up i don't want to get into those right now but i had certain experiences that scared me away from parenthood just because of the example that i saw growing up and the examples i saw from other family members even just friends parents as well because i don't know what it was maybe like it attracted like ne negative attracts the negative or something but a lot of my friends had not the best situations at home either so i just saw a lot of bad experiences growing up and it really made me not want to have kids and even anthony was like i don't know if i want to have kids either like we had that conversation pretty early on in our relationship but of course you, know, you fall in love and things change and you want to have a mini me of you and the other person and me and him had the conversation when we you know found out we were pregnant the first time because i have unfortunately had two miscarriages so when we had our first pregnancy that did end in you know a miscarriage um, we had, you know, the conversation, not going to, you know, be our parents. We're not going to be those examples that we saw. Like, we're going to be better. So after that conversation, my mindset really did change. And I decided to, you know, go into therapy and start working on myself because I wasn't trying to, you know, drag all of that trauma into this. And I asked, does your pom pom still hurt? How long does the pain last after giving birth? So it does not hurt down there anymore. It probably only was sore for like a week. Everybody's different, obviously. Everyone has different pain tolerance. But for me, it stopped hurting after a week. The burning from peeing stopped maybe after like two or three days. But girl, when I tell you the pain from number two in, oh my god. 
up. I probably held it in for like a week because I was so traumatized from how bad it hurt when I had to take a poop. Keep in mind, it is also normal to not poop for a couple days after having a baby. It's weird because before you have the baby, when you're about to go into labor, like one of the signs is like diarrhea, but then after you have the baby, all of a sudden you can't poop anymore. Quay asked, was the labor with your son easier than with your daughter? No. <laughs> Nyla, like I got induced because I had high blood pressure. So I was at my appointment and my doctor was like, you need to go to the hospital right now and get this baby out. Like this is not safe. So I went home, grabbed my hospital bag. Anthony got in the car. And you know, we went to the hospital, got induced, and I did all my laboring, my delivery, everything, like epidural went smooth, great. But with my son, it was a planned induction at 39 weeks, but you know, the epidural ended up failing, so I ended up being in a lot of pain, and I was there from probably like seven in the morning, gave birth at 3.51. So it wasn't that far off like the labor time, so just a couple of hours. Um, but the pain, the contractions, <laughs> the peeing on myself, <laughs> like, tearing part, like, yeah, it definitely was not easier. But I would say the pregnancy, like with my son compared to with my daughter, was a bruise. So this person doesn't have a username, it's just two red hearts, but they asked, can you choose the option to not lay on your back? Like an example, be on your knees instead. Yes, and if you watch my um, birth vlog, you will hear my nurse say, choose whatever position you wanna be in, mama. If you wanna be on your back, you wanna be on your knees, you wanna be on the edge of the bed, if you wanna be over you know, a chair, like whatever you wanna do, let us know, like the position you wanna give birth in. But girl, I was at the point where I was like, I have to push right now, <laughs> like just go. Sarah Marie asked, what weeks did you start doing pelvic exercises? So if you're talking about pelvic exercises, like before having the baby, I didn't do any, <laughs> like I wasn't really active during my pregnancy. Like, yes, we would go to the park and do like a little like two mile walk like once a week, but I guess that's kind of active, right? That's something. But I have heard that they do definitely like make a difference. And it is also one of the first exercises they recommend when you get back into exercising. I am currently in the stage of I'm starting to walk and like do a little jog. And girl, I feel so good. I think that's also why like my mental and just everything feels so much better this time around because after I had my first baby, I was a complete mess like it um i wasn't able to exercise i wasn't able to eat properly do anything but this time around i feel completely different and the ex exercise is like helping me a lot leia asked since you experienced birth without an epidural do you think you'd be able to do that again like was the pain during slash after as bad as you thought it would be unmedicated i say i don't want an epidural but child i don't know um i definitely feel like i could do it without the epidural again um going in like if i you know i get pregnant again and i'm about to have the third baby i will definitely probably ask for the epidural but i know that i could do it without like i know i can because i just did it but the pain and just i don't know i don't know the pain was pretty bad when i was right about to like give birth like that was like the worst thing i've ever felt in my life I feel like some people probably clicked on this video for like reassurance or to feel like, okay, like Nessa's gonna tell me everything's gonna be fine. No, it is gonna be fine. Lisette, did you have any anxiety when you found out the epidural failed? Oh girl, of course. Like you can hear me in my video say like, does this mean I'm gonna feel everything now? Like, am I gonna feel it? And I just started crying, but I like cut the video cause I just like started ugly crying so bad cause I was so scared. Yeah, I definitely felt anxiety, but I mean, it was worth it. Jacqueline Nahado asked, did you get to use the gas and air? Um, it wasn't even offered to me. I probably could have asked for it, but I didn't feel like I needed it either because from the second the epidural failed to like, you know, delivering my son, like everything happened so quickly that it wasn't even a thought on my mind. But I did go into it like before I was thinking like, oh, if I'm going to do this natural, I'm going to ask for gas and air, but I completely forgot. Janessa asked, how was the swelling down there after birth? I was so swollen after my first and my labia was touching the toilet seat. Oh my goodness, girl. So yes, I was actually so swollen before I had the baby. Like I put a mirror down there because I was like, okay, let's do like a quick, you know, little shave before we go to the hospital. So it's not, you know, full on Amazon forest down there for the doctors. <laughs> um, so I looked down there and I was like, oh my God, like, why is it so swollen? Because I wasn't swollen like that with nyla um so yeah i was definitely swollen before and for like a week afterwards it was interesting looking <laughs> zamaripa asked how do you spread your time with two babies now i have a two-year-old and i'm five weeks pregnant love you girly blessing is your way so i have anthony <laughs> luckily so he you know 
He'll wake up with Nyla in the morning and make her breakfast, you know, get her situated while me and Sun Sun are still sleeping because Anthony knows like if we're sleeping, that is a very rare thing. Like we're kind of getting into a schedule. He's starting to get comfortable and, you know, getting used to like his little sleep sleeping situation. But before, like, I was up every, like, 15 to 30 minutes because he was not having, like, right now you guys are, like, balanced inside of his, like, bedside bassinet, so I can't really show you it. Oh, uh, let me just put the camera up. What am I talking about? Like, I don't got a tripod, but I have this, like, bedside bassinet. We got this from Target. But he just absolutely hates this thing. So the first, like, two weeks were just, like, me waking up every, like, 15 minutes. But now he's sleeping for like three to four hours and I'm getting my sleep in. So Anthony will let us just sleep once we actually do get to sleep. He has Nyla downstairs. Um, and then, yeah, then I'll go down there with him and we'll just both tag a team and take care of the both of them. But Anthony definitely does like play a big part in being able to take care of both of them at the same time, which I'm sure it's possible. But child, toddlers are a lot. <laughs> And it also helps that we have a set schedule for Nyla. Like she eats at the same time, snacks at the same time, goes to sleep around the same time, takes a bath at the same time. Like she has a routine that doesn't get broken. Um, so that kind of like helped. We're not just kind of like free balling it. Mia asked, does she actually stay stretched out forever or does it go back to normal? I'm gonna tighten up again and it's gonna be fine. No. So I was looking online a bit and different sources were saying that it takes about 6 to 10 weeks for the vagina to go back to the size and contour that it was before having the baby. So although that does happen, it will not be exactly the same and the outside can also change as well. So because of your hormones, it can change the color of your vagina. So like the labia and the perineum can appear darker. Um, the inner labia can even look looser or hang lower than before. Oh, and there are some exercises that you can also do for down there like kegel balls and stuff like that how was the recovery like for the first week or two since i saw you got a tear and had to get stitches so it wasn't hard at all um just because you know i had a little bit of knowledge from the first time but i would say it wasn't that bad like i had disposable diapers i wasn't you know wearing those pads like those gigantic pads that they gave me last time i actually went to target and i bought some like depend diapers with cleaning down there um with a like l-shaped bottle so like it kind of like turns so you can squirt up so i would clean myself with that just using regular you know soap and warm water when i would take a shower um i used witch hazel pads i would put those inside of my underwear on top of like a pad and those are really good for you know like healing as well then i also have this like anesthetic spray so i would spray myself down there to you know help with the stinging and the pain so that kind of numbed it a little bit helped it out a lot so it was really just a cycle of switching my Depend diapers because sometimes I didn't want to wear pads so I would just put one of those on and grab them from Target. So much easier than putting pads on and a lot more comfortable, believe it or not. Julia Paxton, is it true that your body forgets how painful it is after a while? Giving birth? Like the contractions? Like your body just starts getting used to it? Uh. <laughs> how did your epidural fail? I do not know because I looked it up and only 10% of them fail, but a couple of girls in the comments of my video were saying that theirs failed as well. So I'm feeling like those statistics are not correct, but I don't know. It just ended up happening. Like my water broke. I felt my water break and just all of the like slight numbness that I felt in my legs because with Nyla, I did not feel my legs. Like I could not get out of the bed or move my legs. They had to lift them. They felt like freaking tree trunks. But this time I had a feeling that the epidural was gonna fail because I could completely still feel my legs. There was a little numbness when they put the catheter inside of me for me to pee because, you know, when you get an epidural, they don't expect you to be getting up and going to the bathroom. So they put the catheter in and I did also read that sometimes if they don't put the catheter in correctly or if they put it in a certain way, it can cause your epidural to fail. So I'm wondering if that's what happened because they put it in and then I could actually feel myself peeing and you're not really supposed to feel it. So I was like, what's going on? I don't know, it could have been the catheter, it could have just been the medication wasn't administered correctly or not enough. I don't know. 
Anise asked, did you have heavy blood clots after having your baby? I had some pretty large ones for a prolonged amount of time and I'm pregnant again, so I'm just scared. No, I did not have any heavy blood clots after having the baby at all. I know I did see like a couple little like clots, like small ones came out, just probably like the first like 24 hours after having the baby. Hey Wiz, this is my first baby and I'm thinking about having it natural because of all the complications with the epidural, but it's also my first, so am I tripping? No, it's completely up to you. Whatever, you know, you want to do with your body, you're not tripping whatever decision you decide to make. Just know that you are strong enough to do it with an epidural or without, so whichever decision you decide to make is the right one for you. Um, but just know that you're gonna feel all the pressure down there once your water actually breaks because there's not gonna be any fluid to you know kind of be a boundary or like a barrier you're gonna feel everything just weighing down and it's it's painful sis it's painful but once again our bodies are built to do this so it's fine you can do it it's just gonna hurt and yes of course there are you know some things that can happen after you have an epidural like some women are left with back pain for the rest of their life unfortunately um, after I had Nyla, I did not notice any significant back pain and after having my son, I don't notice any significant back pain, but obviously it could show up later on at any point. Excuse my son pooping in the background, um, but I'm a first time mom and I would love to have my name private if you post or see this please. I'm young and feel overwhelmed. Do you have any lists or tips for preparing and prepping baby showers, nurseries, baby essentials, postpartum, or even hospital bag tips? So let's start with hospital bag tips. So I feel like you don't need as much as you think you're going to actually need because the hospital most of the time is going to supply literally everything so with my first delivery i feel like i just had a bunch of like unnecessary stuff like of course you want to have like a pillow a blanket your laptop or like a nintendo switch something to keep you entertained while you're in the bed or afterwards you're just kind of like waiting around type stuff um so definitely like take that stuff with you but the stuff that they actually give you at the hospital don't feel like you have to go and buy it because they'll just give you more or like i said it's already there I also bought this, I'll put it on the screen. You can get this at Target, it's called Freedom Mom. You can get it from Target, you can get it from Walmart, you could order it on Amazon, and it has everything that you need postpartum for your, you know, your pregnancy bag, your hospital bag. So it'll come with the, you know, little L-shaped bottle, but they also give you one at the hospital. It'll come with those pads that you can activate them and they're cooling. You also get those at the hospital and they'll give you the long pads and all these other little things that, like I said, once again, you will already get at the hospital. So you can choose to buy that, but I still have pretty much most of that stuff still in the package because I got everything at my hospital. So I feel like I took way too much that I even needed. I could definitely do an entire video on like my favorite baby essentials because I am going, you know, a different route this time with, you know, Nyla. I was a new parent. I didn't know too much. So we were just using like Huggies or Pampers and uh, Aveeno and, you know, eating Gerber food. And it turns out that a lot of these things are very, very toxic for babies, unfortunately. But we don't know that because it's put in front of us. And most of the time, that's the only stuff that is accessible to, you know, moms on WIC or on food stamps as well. So you just take what you get yet or it's like you know the main product that's advertised to us we think that that's the safest but it turns out it's not so this time around we're doing like only Millie Moon or Honest diapers or cloth diapers we're using pipette for you know shampoo and body wash we're using um this product this product instead of that one so I could definitely make like an entire list and do a whole video um on all of my like favorite baby essentials non-toxic and really give you like a whole like rundown on all that stuff for the baby shower i've never had one i will eventually do a nursery tour because it's half nursery half toddler room now and it's now a completely different theme it's not pink anymore with butterflies so i will probably do a video on that so stay tuned for that lily asked what was the worst part about having a baby um the worst part oh girl there was a lot of questionable moments but it's all ends up being worth it it's all worth it in the end i would say the all-time all-time worst worst moment of delivery would probably just have to be after my water broke because all of the pain just instantly just like rushed into my body like like, I don't even like to think about it. Like, I can't even watch my birth vlog. Like, while I was editing it, I was crying. And when I did the rewatch before I uploaded, I was crying because I just, like, saw when, like, everything just, like, hit me. Feeling of, like, all the fluid being gone and you could feel 
everything like just weighing down that was probably the hardest and the worst part crystal asked does it actually hurt during pregnancy when your stomach grows um no you don't actually like notice it but once it starts you know really starting to stretch out like at the end of the third trimester you do get like kind of itchy sometimes but also like i'm just throwing in random facts if you're like really really itchy that can be a sign of something so you need to talk to your doctor about it i'm not saying like oh like a little itch from like the stretch marks i'm talking about like if you're itchy in your pregnancy bring that up to your OBGYN. and because we're educating in this video i'm going to tell you guys exactly what it is so it's actually called cholestasis cholestasis um of pregnancy commonly known as a liver condition that can occur in late pregnancy the condition triggers intense itching but without a rash itching is usually on the hands and feet but can also occur on other parts of the body and complications with cholestasis of pregnancy can be baby being born too early preterm birth lung problems or stillbirth and increases the risk of things such as preeclampsia and gestational diabetes so you want to pay attention to that just throwing that out there so that's not the kind of itching I'm talking about. I'm talking about just like a little like stretch mark kind of itch. And I didn't start feeling that probably until like week 32 when my belly really, really started to grow. But I just used bio oil or any sort of like, you know, like shea butter, cocoa butter, and that usually took care of it. Taisha asked, how long do you have to wait to do the do after birth? So doctors typically recommend at least six weeks, but you should not start engaging in that until your doctor, you know, checks you out and gives you the thumbs up. Is there any changes in the hoo-ha after being stitched up? So you're probably wondering, does it get tighter? Does it get looser? And in my opinion, in my experience, it seems just about the same as it was before. I actually remember seeing a video one time of like a guy in the delivery room with his nurse like cracking a joke. Like this was like a real thing. It wasn't like a skit. It was a real legit like. And the dad tells the doctor, go ahead and throw an extra stitch in there if you don't mind. And the mom's just like. And let's just answer one more question from Lonnie. Has your body ever fully recovered from your first pregnancy slash birth? Um, so they say that most women will start feeling normal again after like four. Oh, but I have seen online that it does take like a year for your body to like fully recover after having a baby. And I don't even think I gave my body a year after giving birth to get pregnant again. So that's it for today's video. I hope I answered some questions. Feel free to leave some more in the comments below and I'll, you know, answer some down there and you guys can answer other people's questions as well and share your experiences. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I hope I answered anything that anyone was, you know, wondering. If you're about to have a baby, don't be scared. You got this girl. Like, so whether you're about to do this with a partner, without one, with family, without any support system, just know that you were stronger than you realize and you got this. Just try to take it easy. Try to, you know, practice your breathing. There's a lot of exercises that you could look up to, you know, prepare yourself mentally and learn how to breathe in those moments when you're in pain to, you know, kind of cease it a little bit. But just know you got this and I believe in you and you're amazing. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Follow me on Snapchat because I post every day on there and I will see you guys all in another video. Bye.